In this video, we'll look at how to generate VRLM files using the CCDC. We're going to access structures from the Cambridge Structural Database here. And in this particular case, we're just going to use the most simple example, the one that's given, sulfadiazine. Now one of the things to keep in mind is that any structure that has alternate conformations will have to have those alternate conformations removed. We're going to select just the first example from this list. And what this will do is it'll automatically open the structure in a JSMOL viewer, which will be right here, the 3D viewer. And we're going to use console commands to make some modifications to the structure so that it can be more easily 3D printed. So in order to get to the console, uh, we're going to have to go to the menu, which is down here. So here's the menu. Takes a second to open up, but we'll open up the console. And then I'm going to paste in a series of commands. These are things that I've already determined to be reasonable presets. These are available um, in the manuscript, and they're also available on the GitHub website in the molviz settings.txt file. Uh, in the GitHub repository. One of the things that we have to do is get rid of double bonds. Those are difficult to print. We're also going to make all the bonds the same color. And then the last line of this input is we're actually going to automatically write out a VRL M file. Uh, we're just going to push run here. And then we get a dialog that asks us to save twice. We have to do that. And now it's processing and we'll see in just a moment that we'll actually have both downloaded the file and we have our changed representation of our structure. And this has now been saved into our VRLM file. And we'll open this up with Moltprint 3D. So to open with Moltprint 3D, we use the Import VRLM button. And we're going to use just the standard 16 uh, side primitives for this. This defaults to our download directory. And now we've imported this file. You can see everything is highlighted in this case. So all of the um, individual structures have been highlighted. And the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to clean the scene. Uh, this generates the interaction map between pins and cylinders and gets rid of all of these extraneous objects that are in the scene. Now once this, the scene is clean, we can actually begin the group selection process. And again, we're going to be selecting junction points. We could scale bonds, we could do a number of other things at this point. Uh, but we already have our auto group coloring set, so we can now just start clicking things. And in the de default in Blender is to use right click. So we right click and we now ha have defined one group. And if we click an adjoining sphere, uh, we now have two groups defined. And I'm just going to go ahead and click these. This is a zinc atom here that um, is probably a point of interest. So I'm going to go ahead and select everything around that. And again, to, to select multiple things in Blender, you use Shift and right click. Those are the default settings for Blender. This all looks pretty good. So now we can go ahead and we can pin and join this. And in this case, I'm going to use just all of the standard settings, 16 side cylindrical pins, etc. But these things could be changed. And in just a second, we now have a series of individual objects which contain the necessary pins and holes. And I'll just move these apart so you can see all of the individual pieces. Now one of the things in this orientation, it would be difficult to actually print these. And one of the things that's hard to do is actually find proper orientations for printing molecular models. What we'd like them to do is be as flat as possible. So we're going to use the floor all feature of this. So we can look at uh, along the build plate. We click floor all and now we have flattened out each of the molecules as much as possible. The only thing left to do at this point is to export these models and we can just click export all and then each of these will be generated as an STL file that will be ready for printing.